so we're sitting here tonight with Dylan McKenna, who's going to answer some questions that everybody's wanting to know about his life, his past, and what his intentions in the future are. I'm kind of scared, because knowing James, I might be asked some questions that I don't want to answer, but hopefully not. You have to answer them. Okay. Or I get, I get uh, beat in the back if I don't answer the questions. Pretty much. Okay, I'll answer Okay, so how old were you when you started lifting? How old was I? So I first started lifting when I was in eighth grade. Like, it was actually one of my mom's ex-boyfriends at the time. It's a pretty funny story. He was just really into lifting and going to the gym. So I went to the gym a few times with him, and I was just so weak. And I was just like this prepubescent little eighth grade boy. And, like, I didn't really like it that much just because I feel like I wasn't good at it and I was so little and skinny. So then I, I did that a few times, didn't really enjoy it. Then I started, like, seriously lifting my freshman year um, right after football season because I was like, I need to put weight on and get bigger. So I started lifting um, for my high school sports when I was about 15. So that's when I started lifting seriously consistently. Okay. It would be 15, yeah. Okay. What were you like before you started? Like, before – you started working out and getting bigger. Yeah. Were, you, were you like a jock or a nerd or? Um, I would average? say like, I don't know. I feel like when I was younger, like when I was growing up, I was like, what you could say, I, don't, I mean, I was always very into sports. I played football, lacrosse, baseball, mm-hmm. hockey, soccer, um, literally played like every sport, okay, you know so what I'm saying, that you could play. I was, my biggest sports were like football and uh, hockey and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. See, I was more of like a quote unquote jock, like athlete. Um, and I would say that, like, I was a, I was very, when I was younger, looking back now, I was a very, like, insecure person. I was a very insecure kid just because the town that I grew up in, like, everybody was so competitive and it was, like, all about, like, right. who's the best athlete, like, you know, and, like, mm-hmm. like you know, who, like, who has the, like, the nicest shoes and all these things. <laughs> right. So I was just always, like, uh, 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 like, just trying to, you know what I mean? Like, my ego was just right. always being, like, just built and built and built because I want like everyone wanted to be the best in a sense and like like so that's kind of how that happened for me so I, was, I would say I was really insecure and then like when I found lifting in the gym I started to actually become truly confident in myself right. not really care what other people like think etc because I found something that like I just loved so much and I could connect with other people that loved it on, on a certain level and it was almost like I didn't care anymore like what people thought right. about you know oh what what, he, what shoes I have or right. how good I am at this like I was like like I actually found something not that I didn't like sports but it was it was nothing like bodybuilding when I found that so yeah I guess like in a sense when I found it I just was like I just really became a lot more confident in myself mm-hmm. and I didn't really care yeah, what other people thought about me and I think it, ch- it definitely changed me for the better, 100%. Yeah. So when you first started getting really, really into it, was that your motivation becoming more competitive or did some girl break your heart? Or no, I th- I'm, well, when I first got into it, like, I was just so skinny, right? right? I was very skinny and, like, I played sports. So, one, I wanted to improve in performance. And, two, I just wanted to be, like, more physically imposing um, on, the, on the field and just in general also to get right. girls. Like, I just wanted to – I didn't want to be skinny anymore. And, and initially, when I first started, you know, lifting and I started getting bigger, getting stronger and all that stuff, like, it was everything to me. The compliments I would receive, like, when people would tell me, you know, um, and this is at the very beginning, you know what I mean? Because, like, like I said, I started to become more confident. At the beginning, I wasn't, but I started getting a little bit of results and, like, every, you know, when a girl would say, like, oh, wow, you look bigger, like, that was my whole, like, yeah. that was everything I lived for, right. and, like, when guys would, like, you know what I mean, even guys say, oh, wow, you know, you're looking bigger, whatever the case is, mm-hmm. that's, like, that was my, one of my biggest motivations, you know what I mean, but uh, as time went on, I just, I really learned to actually love the gym, and just being able to go in there, relieve stress, and just enjoy the process of doing it, and uh, being able to just see the results in the mirror myself, not even right. caring what others think about it. So uh, essentially, I feel like it always fades out. The compliment fades. You're lifting. Yeah. You're getting all these compliments. It's really – but eventually, you know, that's not really going to – it's not going to um, fill your void anymore. You, you need to like actually truly, you know, figure out why you really want to do this if you're going to do it like how I did it where you're lifting it all, every day. Mm-hmm. You're like kind of um, – well, you know, the diet's super strict, you're missing certain parties, whatever it might be, you right. know what I'm saying? To be that strict, it's not for some compliments. You have to love it, so. Well, I know this sounds odd, but, yeah. you, but you have to realize that there's actually a lot of people that have been motivated by you in general yeah. to, more, to start working out or to continue working out. Back then, yeah. who, if anybody, motivated you? It's kind of crazy. It's interesting because, like, when people do tell me that, it is almost a very surreal 
situation when you know when, when, and even like we will be in here sometimes and someone comes in and, oh I watch the channel yeah. and it's just like it, it's such like an insane feeling because I remember when Dave and I were at the Atlantic City Fit Expo and there was um a guy by the name of Stan Efforting there a lot of you guys probably wouldn't know him do you know who he is bodybuilder powerlifter and like essentially he's just a public figure like he's a famous like you know bodybuilder and like me and Dave really looked up to him and like we were so scared to even go say hi to him, we 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 felt like oh we can't even go say hi, you know right. what I mean? So that's like where I was at one point, and and I mean so Stan Efforting was someone I looked up to, um, Christian Guzman was a big person I looked up to just because, like I just really enjoyed like um, the positivity that he had in his videos and how he was like one of the pioneers of like having you know. Um, people come in and edit his videos and make them really right. good. He also edited them. I don't know. His videos were edited well. Right. He had like a really fun, cool lifestyle. Like he mm -hmm. was very like motivated person. Like, so it motivated me, made me feel positive And like, you know what I mean? It just, mm -hmm. it just, you enjoyed watching it. He had like, you know, he had a really like pretty girlfriend at the time. <laughs> so it was just like this really dope life right. you're watching in a sense. Right. So I, I would say probably like Christian Guzman was a big one that a lot of you guys would know. Um, Jeff side was somewhat of a, a physique motivation. Right. Um, I don't know who else. Let me think. There's a bunch of people, honestly, that I got some sort of motivation from, but I would say, like, those are a few to name, you know, but I definitely did watch everybody's channel, you know what I mean, every okay. fitness channel out there, everything. Okay. I still do keep up on a lot of stuff, people that I like to watch now, but, like, back then, I watched everybody, I knew everything about the industry, Matt Ogis was a huge um, motivator, Chris Lovato, all those guys, so yeah, I would miss all this okay. stuff. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, how long was it before you started figuring out the food? The food. Yeah. That's a good question, actually. And it does have to make a difference? For yeah. I think, like, for me, that that's when I actually, like, that was the turning point for me when I realized, like, that the potential was endless for, like, how big and strong I could get. Or, like, when I really realized, like, okay, wow. Like, I'm, that's when I started seeing really big progress mm -hmm. where people were, like, calling me out for juice. Even right. when, really, at that time, it was not, mm -hmm. I was taking nothing. I was literally just eating food right. and I and I realized how important it is you know what I mean to eat enough food when you're a skinny guy mm -hmm. you know to get bigger you need to eat enough calories it's just how it is like if you want to get bigger if you want your body to mm -hmm. grow and morph and if it's here now you want it here like you want it bigger right. the calories you know you know they're the most important thing so when I started getting calories I didn't care about how I got them right. I was just like I want to grow in size <laughs> I want to be a larger individual that weighs heavier just literally it's just, it's just more inertia coming down when I jump right, that's yeah. what I wanted so I ate like a sloppy like crap but I realized how important food was once I started eating enough and, it's, and also it's very hard to eat enough for a lot of for a lot of young guys or just guys in general that are skinnier right. so um i mean anything that's really hard is probably going to garter some type of result and it right. is very hard to eat four thousand five thousand depending on who it is six thousand calories a day is very hard but it's going to garner next level results when it comes to obviously building muscle and building strength and um so yeah i mean the answer to that would be 100 percent when i started you know, focusing on my food, mm -hmm. it changed the game. Yeah. But how far into it do you think you was? How far into it? I don't know. I mean, probably about a year and a half, honestly, okay. which is early. A lot of people, right. it's not like that early. Yeah, but really for me, it was about a year and a half just because I was surrounded by good, like the right people. Mm -hmm. And even like coming in here, you would, you know, you would always preach that and stuff like that. So, I mean, I was around the right people. Nice yeah. I was around the right people that would give me good information in mm -hmm. a sense. But, uh, Year and a half, I would say about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Switching to the training part. Yeah. When did you? Because everybody kind of works out as a workout, and they yeah. just kind of don't know what they're doing in the beginning. When did you start pushing weight and intensity? How far in? When did I start like? Seriously, when did I start training intensely? What do you mean? You, pushing weight, like deliberately going for more weight and more intensity oh. in workouts. So you're saying like when did I start training for like strength and progressive overload? Yeah, sense? basically. So like when I first started training, I just re I was. My goal immediately, when I, and this is also a, a big benefit that I had in my favor, like, because I started training where all the egos were flaring in, like, the high school football weight room, like, my goal was always to get stronger on, you know, my squat and my bench. Like, I always wanted, they, you know, increasing those was right. the main priority. Okay. So I think really right when I got into lifting, seriously, you know, right around that when I was about 15, um, like, freshman year, towards the middle end of freshman year of high school, I pretty much right away started, you know, lifting very heavy, always trying to get stronger. Okay. But I didn't start until about a year after that. So a year after I got into the gym, about midway through my sophomore year, I was about 16. 
I didn't start actually getting on a program mm-hmm. that was going to actually like allow me to track my progressive overload um, and be on specific sets and reps that were going to actually, you know, help me progress each month right. to garner like, you know, the most maximal amount of strength. So right. when I hopped on a program, just like the eating was, it was mm-hmm. a game changer because before I would just go in the gym and lift heavy and that's better than going in the gym and kind of you know, lifting like a bitch and just, right, and right. you know what I mean? Doing no, like yeah. reps and oh, I don't really want to bench and squat and deadlift yeah. or I don't want to lift, you know, mm-hmm. not lifting too, too hard. So I was always training hard, but when I actually got my training more regimented right. and I, yeah, like I said, I was just doing progressive overload mm-hmm. programming. It exploded, it a big difference. exploded everything. Yeah. Well, you want know to find too is a lot of people when they come in here and they're asking about you or Dave mm-hmm. or whatever, I think that they kind of unconscious or conscious rather. Mm-hmm. You want to kind of gauge themselves, their progress by your early progress. Oh, absolutely. To yeah. see where you're at. To see where they're going to be, maybe. Yeah. Exactly. So I was wondering <laughs> if um, if you can remember this far back. Yeah. Years and years ago. Whether you remember whether in like year one, back year two, year three, buck. exactly. <laughs> what like your bench, squat, yeah. deadlift was like year oh, one, year, year two, okay. year three. I remember specifically, that's a really good question. That's interesting. I would say when I, so basically when I got into lifting, right, after this was after wrestling season so basically right around january time my freshman year of high school at that time just due to growing more like into a man mm-hmm. and uh and just doing wrestling in a sense um i i just started like over those few months of me wrestling my freshman year i just started getting just a little bigger a little more muscle on me and i remember that i could do like 135 since so at 15 mm-hmm. midway through my freshman year of high school i could do 135 for about like f- five or six reps mm-hmm. right when I went into the gym, like the right. first time I tried to bench again. Okay. And then pretty That's immediately I got up to the point where like, let's just say before I graduated uh, high school, my senior year, mm-hmm. I mean, sorry, not my senior year, my freshman year, my bench is like 200, right. around 200 pounds. And then I remember I hit 225 before I went into high school sophomore year. Oh, really? So I hit two plates on bench before I went into high school. Wow. My sophomore year, I hit it for one. And um, and then I remember I hit 245 my sophomore year. I think by the end of my sophomore year, my bench was like 260, 270. Okay. Okay. So like, yeah, it, it really just going up and up. And I was eating enough and all these things. And then um, I'm trying to think. So and then like just the next set of numbers I'll go to because I wasn't as focused on deadlifts or squats then. Mm-hmm. But then my senior year, I believe my best deadlift was. Um, before I graduated, like 605 deadlift, a, what was it, like a 340 bench, and like maybe 500 squat, I think. I think those are my okay. lifts, yeah, at that time. That's pretty impressive. I'm pretty sure, yeah, right around there. So. Okay, now here's a weird question to ask you. Mm-hmm. Do you find that um, lifting getting stronger and bigger helps you socially at all? Yeah, um... Or social confidence. Yeah, it is. Fu- it's a funny question in a sense, but I honestly think that like, so like how I said, like lifting sort of giving me so much confidence, like in mm-hmm. my life, not even like, so obviously getting bigger, like, cause I was insecure about being very skinny. Right. So getting bigger gave me more confidence. And it, for me, it wasn't in the way where I was like, Oh, like I'm this like big, bad motherfucker. Right. But it was just like, I just felt more like let's just say I'm riding my bike home at night. I was like, you know what? I feel more like I can fucking protect myself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I just felt better about myself. Right. And um, in that way, and when I was around females, you know, I just felt more, I felt like I was more of a presence. You know what I mean? Right. I felt like I, I had more confidence with women. And, it, and, um, and I don't know. So I think that like it, hopefully in the right way for most people, like, like how it did for me, it can really honestly affect your confidence in your social life because you feel more confident now and it's not even necessarily just because like you know you, you think you know you look better now it's more so just like I don't know like internally just you're putting all this hard work in the gym and you know how hard you're grinding to make these results and like right. so it gives you some sort of like confidence you're like okay like I'm doing something where I'm you know working my ass off and I'm seeing results from it right. so you get you're now disciplined right. you know what I mean so just having that discipline that I never had with anything else ever in my life mm-hmm. gave me a lot of confidence and on top of that obviously being more physically imposing I just had yeah I had more confidence so I think that I can really heavily affect people socially right. and I've seen it too with plenty of people that have come up an island and just friends right. and stuff where you know let's just say they lost a bunch of weight and they got in shape or whatever the case I think that like 
it can definitely affect them people socially. Because now, I mean, for example, when you're very, let's just say you're super overweight, right? right? You're not going to feel as, like you, the league of what of what type of female that you can get is going to be different than right. when you lose all that weight and now right. you're in great shape. So you're going to feel more confident to go talk to that girl. Right. And that's going to affect it socially. Do you think women care about stuff like that? Or they care um, about well, I think that like obviously women, I mean, like I think women care. Um, right. About both, obviously, <laughs> it's obvious. Right. But you know, what I'm, I mean, whether it be like a one-time hookup situation, that's mm-hmm. obviously going to be more so. It's, uh, it's obvious, yeah, right. based on the looks type thing, which some guys really want to do, mm-hmm. and whatever. So if you're into that, I mean, obviously that's going to help you. But even so, I mean, I think that like you know, to be in a relationship with someone, you have to be attracted to the person. If you're super overweight, that girl, you know what I mean, is probably not going to be attracted to you. They're not going to want to, they're not going to see you romantically right. when all that weight comes off and now you're this whole different individual with this whole different level of confidence and... So you don't think fat people deserve love? I think that they, they don't, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't... I know like, you don't think that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying... just joking. I'm trying to motivate he the people. not think that. I'm trying to motivate the people out there <laughs> just because it's like, yes, it can definitely affect you socially because you know what I mean? You're, you, you can... You can Get people that right. are more attractive to the opposite sex or the same sex, depending. And True, um, you just have more, like I said, honestly, the biggest part of it is just the, the fact that for me, like, you have that discipline now. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Most people don't have discipline like yeah, that in their lives. Yeah, they never experience day in and day out where they're grinding in the gym mm-hmm. hard enough to see great results. And you also video eating. Game the same thing? Huh? You don't think the video game plays? Well, the video game is the same thing. I mean, so actually, you know what I mean? But if you video game, it's funny, right. but nowadays, yeah, yeah. There's kids making $3 million uh-huh. playing Fortnite, so I mean, I guess it is. Huh? Yes, this is true. Now, this is going to be along the same lines, but a little bit different. Do you think it made you happier and improved your mood also on the training? Um, I know it's a little subtle differentiation. Subtle differentiation, but. Yeah, absolutely. Because, like, I think that, um, Going to the gym frequently like on a daily basis is going to give you more um, your endorphins. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like it's going to it's going to release right. chemicals in your body that are going to make you um, feel better, feel happy, feel more accomplished in a sense. And then yeah, just on top of that, when your body is healthy and in good shape, you know you're going to feel you're going to feel better. Obviously, so I do think that it definitely um, I do I do think it does it does make you feel better. Okay.